What's up CF students? It's Jake here with our final Psalm 23 devotional. For the past four weeks we've been going through as a whole church one of the most famous Psalms in the whole Bible, Psalm 23. And today we are on the final verse that we are going to be going over in this uh, verse 6. But the, before we get into verse 6 I want us to take a look back at what we've looked at so far. So if you have your Bible Follow along with me as we go through the first five verses of Psalm 23. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Now let's just think for a second about David's life, right? Let's think about who David is. I mean, he was a shepherd, right? Who was anointed king of Israel. He defeated Goliath. That's a big deal. But then he also had a lot of tough moments where he was uh, running for his life when Saul was after him trying to kill him. You also have his low moments as king where he had an affair with Bathsheba and then killed her husband. And then you have all of the family drama that plagued him after that fact. And so David's life was a life of seasons. He had high moments and he had low moments. But let's look at how he concludes the psalm in verse 6. It says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, notice that David doesn't say that his sin chases him all the days of his life, or his shame chases him all the days of his life, or his guilt chases him all the days of his life, or his literal enemies who are trying to kill him. No, all of that stuff, when it comes to the end of his life, and he's writing this psalm, and it gets to the, the concluding message of the psalm, that stuff fades into the background, and his what he says is that goodness and mercy follow him all the days of his life. Now that's a profound statement because we've seen in this psalm about how there are times of green meadows and still waters and there's times of the valley of the shadow of death. We looked at last week how God prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies and then what David gets to is that all the days of his life, the thing that follows him is God's goodness and mercy. Now that is just super, super, super profound. And see, this is really what I want to get at. Both in the good times and the bad times, our lives, just like David, go through seasons. But in every single season, when we are following after God and we're walking on that path of righteousness for his namesake, Guess what follows us? It's not the mistakes that you've made in the past. It's not the sin that you get reminded of when you can't sleep at night. It's God's goodness and his mercy. And that is this powerful, freeing uh, idea that we can be completely free of all of this, the shame and the guilt and the sin in our lives. And that, see, that assurance that we can have is what he's talking about in the very last line of this psalm, where he says, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. See, no matter what you've done in life, no matter where you've been, no matter what mistakes you've made, God is inviting you to come home. God is inviting you to dwell in his house forever. God is not a God who is like, well, you've made too many mistakes and, you know, 
those moments where you were in the valley, yeah, that was it for you, and I'm just going to leave you behind. That's not the God that's leading us. The God that is leading us through the still waters and green meadows is the same God who leads us through the darkest valleys. And that same God is bringing us into a place of peace and rest where we dwell in his house forever and ever. And so I want to encourage anybody who's watching this video right now, come home. There is a good shepherd who is waiting for you that doesn't care about what you've done or uh, the mistakes that you've made or where you've been. What God cares about is that he loves you. And what God wants from you is to come home. To come into the good shepherd's loving arms and his tender care. And for, your, for you to be freed of those chains of sin and guilt and shame that follow us when we don't know him. But when we come to him, he breaks off those chains of sin, guilt, and shame and sets us free. So those things are left in the dust. And the only thing that's following us is his goodness and his mercy. And so I just want to encourage anybody right now, if you are in a place where you're struggling and you want to follow after God and you want to make that decision, maybe you've made that decision before. Or maybe you've never made that decision and you've been reluctant. What I want to encourage anybody who's watching this right now is if you want to take that step, go ahead and either comment below or message us because we want to talk you through that. So guys, that's my encouragement for y'all this week. May his goodness and his mercy follow you all the days of your life. And may you dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen.